Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are doing our Mortal Cycles review and we're on to the return to the Ravnica Charm Cycle. This is the last Charm Cycle I'm covering. Um, this is the Allied Charms. We're going to do Enemy Charms next week because there's 10. There's too many to do in one video, but I left these for last because they the enemy ones actually have, excuse me, actually have ones that are uh, not budget. Oh, please hit like and subscribe, it helps a lot. All right, so what are we talking about? So these are all budget, 30 cents and under, so very, very budget. This is the return to the Ravnica Allied co Color Charm Cycle, as I said. And yeah, these are dual colored charms. So I, as usual, I've tried to put them worst to best, but it's really hard. I say that every time, and this one especially is even more hard than the others, so yeah. Uh, if people, especially Demir Charm, I think if people are like, that should not have been where it was, I would fully understand. I had some real hesitation about that one. So yeah, again, these are only the first half. These are the Allied. We're doing the Enemy next week. Again, Allied color pairs just mean on the color wheel, it's the color beside that. So there's like, the white is at the top and to one side is blue and to the other side is green. So uh, you got Azorius, blue, white, and then Selesnya, white, green is two allied colored pairs. So yeah. Number five, Azorius Charm. Okay, a white and a blue, of course, Azorius. So choose one. Creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn or draw a card. Or put target attacking creature or blocking creature on top of its owner's library. Um, if it's blocking, remember, blocking is a status. So once it's blocking, the creature's already blocked. You can't, like, remove the blocker and then your attack goes through. That's not how that works. So if you're attacking and someone assigns a blocker, even if you send the blocker away, it's still considered blocked. So that kind of doesn't really do much. What I do like is the, um, yeah, putting an attacking creature on top of its owner's library. That is very effective. Even just like in the meta game, I think it's way more effective than it is like mechanically because yeah, you basically take whatever creature you, you most is most of a pain in the butt and you're putting on top of their deck, which means their next draw and there you have to cast again just to get back to where they were originally. It's a delay that kind of like can burn a whole turn. If you choose the right unit or the right creature, it will basically just waste their whole next turn. So yeah, that can be pretty huge. Um, anyway, 22 cents. Number four. Demir Charm. So this is the one where I really had just so much trouble deciding where to put it. Um, I put it here at number four. It probably should be higher up, but uh, I don't know where to put it. Where should I put it is maybe the question. A blue, black, choose one. Counter target sorcery. Or destroy target creature with power two or less. Uh, look at the top three cards of target player's library, then put one back and the rest into the graveyard. This, that last one is the one that really stands out to me. You can shut down so many decks, like a miracle deck or something, where they're getting that first card draw, it's gonna like set up their whole turn or they're gonna get this huge like great effect for a low mana cost. You can just throw those cards straight into the graveyard and then like just keep giving them, you know, if they have too many lands, you're just gonna go like another land. And if they don't have enough lands, you make sure the lands go to the graveyard. It really, can mess up an entire turn, which can really have an impact on the game overall. Especially for two mana, you could do this early. Anyway. And counter target sorcery spell as well. That's quite good. Most board wipes are sorcery, so yeah. Countering only a sorcery I think sounds limited, but it is very, very good. Those sorceries are gonna hit hard, right? So anyway, 22 cents again. Number three. Gruel Charm, okay, this is, uh, well, Gruel, green and red. Uh, creatures without flying can't block this turn. 
gain control of all permanents you own. Um, Gorilla Charm deals 3 damage to each creature with flying. Okay, so first up, gaining control of all permanents you own, that is a nice thing to have on a modal spell. It's one of those things where you might not need it at all. That's why it's nice on a modal spell. If someone's stealing creatures, you just get them all back immediately. That is really, really good. So yeah. Um, if you need it, it's there. That's, I guess, the point. The other thing that really stands out to me here is, well, dealing three damage to each creature with flying. Actually really good. Flyers often have lower toughness, right? They have lower toughness. And finally, creatures without flying, so kind of the opposite, can't block this turn. It's basically your win con right there, right? Unless they have a whole bunch of flyers they can use for blocking, you can cast this and just be like, okay, I'm just gonna go in and end the game right here. Um, it's a, it's very, I'm surprised this is the cheapest one, frankly. Number two, Selesnia Charm. Okay, a green and a white. This is the most expensive one. Uh, is you can give a creature plus two plus two and gains trample until end of turn. Remember, it doesn't have to be your creature, right? Exile target creature with power five or greater. Put a put two two white knight creature token onto the battlefield with vigilance. Okay, sure, why not? Um, plus two plus two and trample. Again, not limited to your creatures. That can do a lot of work. And then, um, exiling a creature with power 5 or greater. That is going to be so useful. Especially, like, someone's playing a Voltron. You don't even need to be up against a Voltron deck. They're probably going to have, especially in, like, a multiplayer game, you're going to have a target for this, right? You are going to find a target somewhere. There's going to be a creature that just has 5 or greater, or there's going to be an equipment, or there's, like, a bunch of plus 1, plus 1 counters. Whatever it is... This will find a target, right? And it will be a good target, and it's going to exile them, not destroy. So things like indestructible, don't care, right? Very, very good there. Anyway, 29 cents. Oh, right. The knight option. Okay. You know, that's there. That's It's there. I don't know. Yeah, as I said, 29 cents. Number one. Rakdos Charm. All right, so for a black and a red, you can choose one. Exile target player's graveyard. Destroy target artifact. Each creature deals one damage to its controller. Um, okay, so that, that last one I think is actually really good. You got more and more of these kind of like big token decks coming out. Um, just turn that on its head and like make it be a pile of damage. It maybe not is probably not gonna like end the game but it's gonna put them into like threat area so yeah it's uh quite good for that and yeah exile target players graveyard is the other one where i'm like you need to have graveyard hate i think that's something most decks don't have enough of is graveyard hate it's hard to fit it in and it is one of those things where it's like i know i'm gonna need it but it still feels like a hypothetical so I need to put that in decks more too. Um, but especially, I love, that's one of those things I love on a modal because like maybe you don't really need it at the time. Maybe what you need is to destroy a target artifact. That's probably gonna be useful more frequently than, uh, you know, exiling a player's graveyard. Again, the graveyard thing is just gonna shut off so many strategies, right? Any kind of recursion thing. Okay, done, over, anyway. The list. Azorius Charm, 22 cents. Demir Charm, 22 cents. Gruel Charm, 18 cents. Selesnia Charm, 29 cents. Rakdos Charm, 25 cents. All right, take it easy.